untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 5-color Niv Mizzet Reborn deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features 4 of the namesake card Niv Mizzet Reborn, a 5-mana 6-6 six, six legendary dragon avatar with flying that when it enters a battlefield we reveal the top 10 cards of our library and for each color pair, aka each guild, choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them, put the chosen card in your hand and the rest goes on the bottom. So Niv Mizzet, besides being a 6-6 six, six flyer, can also provide a ton of card advantage in this deck since we have every single guild represented by at least one card. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. We do have a bit of a ramp thanks to Cold Steel Heart from the latest anthology expansion. Enters battlefield tapped, we choose a color as it enters and then taps for one mana of the chosen color so that can help fix our mana and help us ramp towards a turn 4 Niv Mizzet potentially. Then we've got a bit of hand disruption in the mirror with Thought Erasure. Target opponent reveals their hand, we choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card and we also get to surveil one. We've got a bit of removal early on with Angrath's Rampage. Opponent has to sacrifice an artifact, creature or planeswalker. And a bit more ramp with a growth spiral which lets us draw a card and then we may put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield. And then we also have access to Cut to Ribbons, which also counts as a Rakdos card, and that deals 4 damage with the Cut half at sorcery speed, and then afterwards we still have Ribbons that we can cast out of the graveyard thanks to Aftermath, making each opponent lose X life, so this is a great finisher if we have access to a ton of mana in the late game. And then Hydroid Crisis is also a great mana sink that we want to cast once we have access to more mana, as we get a Flying Trampling Jellyfish Hydra Beast that enters with X plus one plus one counters on it, and when we cast Cast the spell, we gain half of X life and draw half of X cards around it down each time. Then at 3 mana we do need some early sweepers against the various aggressive decks, which is why we have a Deafening Clarion in the Boros Colors, dealing 3 damage to each creature, and creatures we control gain lifelink until end of turn, so that's great if we can pair it with a creature like Yasharn or Niv Mizzet Reborn already in play, so we can attack with a big lifelinking creature. Then in Gruul we have Clothus, God of Destiny, probably not going to turn into a creature very often, but an indestructible enchantment that sits in play, and at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase we can exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a land card we get to add a red or green to our mana pool, otherwise we gain 2 life and Clothus deals 2 damage to each opponent. Then we've got Maelstrom Pulse in Golgari, destroying target a non-land permanent and all other permanents with the same name as that permanent, so shines against multiple tokens for instance. We've got Mortify, destroying target creature or enchantment in the Ors of Colors, as well as Kaya, Ors of Usurper, another way to gain life. Thanks to the plus one ability, we can exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard, and we gain two life if at least one creature card was exiled that way. Then the minus one can exile target a non land permanent with converted mana cost one or less, so great against cards like Death Shadow or the Witches of Uncauldron Familiar combo. And the minus five deals damage to target player equal to the number of cards that player owns in exile, and we gain that much life, so it can also synergize nicely with Clothus. Then at 4 mana we've got 2 copies of Binding the Old Gods as another Golgari removal spell, destroying target non-land permanent and opponent controls on the first chapter, and on the second chapter helps us ramp by searching our library for a forest card to put on the battlefield tapped, and on the third chapter creatures we control gain death touch until end of turn, so Binding is especially nice in this deck since we can search up our various green triomes, which can provide additional mana fixing as well. And then we've got Ral's Outburst as our only Izzet card, dealing 3 damage to any target, and then we can look at the top 2 cards of our library, put one of them into our hand, the other one into our graveyard, and then two copies of Yasharn, Implacable Earth, which shines against the various sacrifice decks as a 4-4 legendary elemental boar that when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for a basic forest card and a basic plains card to put into our hand, and we've got one plains and one forest to go with Yasharn. And then players cannot pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities, so this is a great hate card for a lot of combo decks in the format. And then at 5 mana we've got our full playset of Niv Mizzet, as well as our two copies of Hydroid in the late game, and then a singleton copy of Time Wipe as our only Azorius card, returning a creature we control to its owner's hand, and then destroying all creatures, so also synergizes nicely with cards like Niv Mizzet and Hydroid that we can pick back up and replay for value. 
and then going over the mana base we've got one plains and one forest for Yasharn so we've got two of each triome to provide additional mana fixing and they also have the basic land types so that means we can search up our forests with binding and it also makes our check lands come into play untapped most of the time so we've got a check land for each color pair cards like hinterland harbor some petal grove etc and then we also have some shock lands to round out the mana base for the allied color pairs so we've got temple garden sacred foundry overgrown tomb steam vents as well as a watery grave so that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the play and we've got a lot of tap lines but we do have a cold steel heart so we can probably cast a turn for niv mizzet if we find another untapped land i'll try it and then kick things off with Zagoth Triumph. And then this probably names either blue, black, or green. Opponent on a turn one Fervent Champion. Which I cannot quite cut here. Do I still want to run out to Cold Steel or do we wait a turn? I think we wait a turn. That way I can save my planes for turn 4 so we can cast Niv and try and find a Deafening Clarion which is going to be key in this matchup. Double Champion's going to hurt though, so I might have to cut instead. So we don't take 4 damage next turn. Yeah, I think that's fair. And we are on schedule to just cast niv on turn 5 without any additional help. So I can just outburst into Niv. Earthshaker Kenra, 2-1 haste. And there's a Clarion, I guess we'll just cast that one instead. We're not getting any life off of it, but still saves us a lot of damage. So our opponent's got to burn us out from 11, finds another Fervent Champion and Firebrand. So we would love to find another Deafening Clarion. Find a Thought Erasure, a Rampage and Spiral. So no life gain in hand just yet. Pyromancer puts us to 7. All right, so I don't think I'm going to shock myself with Sacred Foundry, which means I can double 2-drop, two 2-drop two plus 3-drop or 4-drop. Probably want to have a look with Thought Erasure before they empty their hands, so we'll start there. And then we can reassess. All right, they've got a lot of burn. Take the Secure the Critics. And Deafening Clarion, I definitely want to draw. I wouldn't be able to draw into it and cast it this turn, since we're going to be one mana short. But we'll keep it on top. And then let's see. For opponent attacks with everyone, I block Pyromancer, take two down to five. I would survive at one life. I probably want to kill one of their creatures here, though. And I guess we'll mortify the Pyromancer, so we take away a wizard for wizard's lightning. And then next turn I can clarion and gain six. And that should put us out of harm's way. Pillar is to five. Opponent passes. So they can actually use Firebrand and Shock to kill my niv if I deal 3 to each creature. So that's going to prevent me from gaining 6, but I can also clear in without the 3 damage mode. And then just gain 6, and then we still have Angrass Rampage to take out a creature as well. Yeah, that seems better. So we'll make them sacrifice a creature. They probably sack Fervent Champion. 
and then we'll just clarion for lifelink. Alright, at 11 life I feel a bit safer. So we can grow spiral and still arouse outbursts. We also have a ribbons in the graveyard we cannot forget about. Could help us close out the game. So I think we're attacking. Interesting that they didn't attack with a firebrand. I guess never mind, I don't have the blue mana to outburst, so I should have just played Cold Steel Heart. So we can ribbons for one more. Wizards sliding down to six, but they need to find five points of damage here with one draw step, which is probably not going to happen. And then we can ribbons for six. And an attack should do it. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Cold Steel Heart can name black, so we can Thought Erasure and eventually Niv. Facing a white weenie deck. Let's see, which land do we play? I guess Triome lets me Thought Erasure turn two if I want to. Although most likely just going to play the Cold Steel Heart anyway. Although taking away a key card like Banalish Marshal could also be important. Alright, opponents a Black White Sacrifice deck instead. So Thought Erasure could maybe take away another Drain Effect like Cruel Celebrant or maybe take away Woe Strider. Yeah, we don't really need to ramp into a 4 drop here, so I can wait a turn on Cold Steel Heart. So let's Thought Erasure. Opponents got a Liliana and a Tessa. Liliana's pretty far away, so I'm not too concerned. Just take the Taisa. And another Thought Erasure. Doesn't seem necessary, even though it can take that Liliana. Because next turn I want to go Cold Seal Heart plus Tank Lands, so we can set up our Niv Mizzets. And this can name blank. Alright, time for Niv. Finds Clarion, Yasharn, and Mortify. So next turn they can Liliana me. It's going to be a tithe taker for now. So let's see. Yasharn doesn't really prevent Liliana from making a sacrifice stuff. Might be a good turn for Deafening Clarion. And then we can still play a Cold Steel Heart as well. Opponent chumps, and we gain six. And this one names. Let's see, we've got only the one green source, but we're about to play Triome. Don't think it matters too much. We've got triple red, double blue, triple blue incoming. Uh, white, maybe. So they do have Liliana, but I think we can battle through it. They might as well attack for one first. Make each player sacrifice two creatures. And then Hydroid for X equals 5, or we can Niv. 
I would like to hit my land drops and hydroid can help where a sniff doesn't. So I think we'll hydroid for five. Could also hydroid for four instead. So I can still potentially play a two drop, but this is fine. And we found an Angras Rampage, which can also deal with Liliana, so... We should be okay here, even if they destroy the Hydroid. Time Wipe can also pick up our Hydroid or Nifmizid again. Ooh, Divine Visitation. Good target for Mortify. Liliana, instead of making a zombie, now makes an Angel. So, let's see. Mortify goes after Visitation. And then, what else do we want to do? Probably just Rampage and get rid of Liliana. Could maybe attack with Hydroid first and they'll jump with Angel to protect our Planeswalker. Opponent gets to draw cards, but I think that's worth it for killing an angel. And then I think I'm still playing this tapped since we have another hydroid we can cast. So I can use more mana. And then next turn I'll probably Niv Mizzets. If we can find Kaya, Ors of Usurper, or Clothis, we can start exiling the opponent's graveyard as well, in case they have some graveyard recursion. As we see, Soren, Vengeful Bloodlord. Still gonna fall to the Hydroid Crisis here. But gets back Taisa, which can potentially double some shenanigans. Could also attack and time wipe. Um, I think I like Niv still. Fine, cut to ribbons, grow spiral, so we can cut Taisa. Also puts our ribbons in the graveyard as another finisher. And I don't think Dawn of Hope is gonna get them back into this. Another Deafening Clarion. So... Can attack. Opponent can make two tokens end of turn and then potentially draw a few cards next turn. Could prevent that from happening by using Clarion now and an outburst on another token. Seems fine. And then they only have one life linking token that gets to draw a card. I wonder if they would have actually been dead to ribbons. Three, four, five, six, seven. Not quite. Can definitely kill them next turn though. I'm just gonna outburst one now. And we'll take another Niv. So they get to draw one card at the cost of two mana. Mortify deals with Niv. But we can attack for five and ribbons for lethal. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand seems keepable. Cold Seal Heart can name White, and then we can cast all our spells. We've got a tank team of Kaya and Clothus, so the graveyards are going to be very clean.
opponent with a turn one Sumperal Grove into Islands. And Gross Parrel, so some sort of Bant ramp or control deck. Can also Gross Parrel, but I like getting Clothus down now. It's gonna be a Smothering Tithe, I see. So they might have some combos with that. Do I pay the tax? Hmm. I guess I do. And then I'll have to pay again for Gross Spiral. Which I wouldn't be able to if I want to end of turn it here. But I do want to hit my land drop. And then... Didn't think we're paying since we can cast Niv. But yeah, our opponent's got a lot of mana here. At least if this doesn't count as card draw for a Smothering Tithe. And then binding a nice answer to the 4 mana enchantment. Although they might already cast something scary next turn. Perhaps the 7 mana addendum card that shuffles our hand back into our library. It's gonna be a second Smothering Tithe first into an Explore. All right. So I don't think I can pay since I need to binding here. So we'll hit for six. See if this resolves. Right, let's see for dead. We have given the opponent a lot of time to set up. Nyx Bloom Ancient, I see. Pretty good with all those treasure tokens. Fay of Wishes gets a sideboard card, so I'm guessing we're dead here to some combo. Emergency Powers, which they can also cast. So that's going to give them a fresh hand, a ton of treasures thanks to Smothering Tithe, and a ton of mana thanks to Nyxbloom Ancient. So that was the missing piece here. So we'll see if they can keep comboing. So they probably need another Fay of Wishes, although they can just play the one in Adventure, discard two cards, pick it back up, and then find sideboard cards to win the game with. Yeah, I needed to find a Thought Erasure a bit sooner, I guess. Take away that Nyx Bloom or Fae of Wishes. Peer into the Abyss. Targeting us. We're at 13. Opponent gets a million more treasure tokens. Emergency powers. Imagine doing this in paper. It's a lot of shuffling. Plays a fail of wishes. Can pick it back up. And we'll probably see some lethal burn spell like Banefire to close out the game here. Yep, there it is. GG's. Well, we got our opponent to 4 life. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw. And I think we've got a keeper. We need to find white mana. But then our hand should be fine. Bit on the slow end of the spectrum, not a ton of early interaction. Opponent on turn one Blood Crypts into Dragon Skull Summits and Heart of Kiron, so some sort of vehicles deck. Well, we've got enough misses, so we're just a planes away from a lot of value. Scrap Heap, Cruise Hearts, hits us for four. At least Clothus can exile the Scrap Heap once it ends up in the graveyard. Although we're still missing white mana for Clarion to destroy the Scrap Heap. So we're gonna take four again. And nothing else from our opponents. Cut can destroy the scrap heap here. That seems fine. And they didn't play another creature last turn, so they might be unable to crew Heart of Kiron. They might be sitting on a pile of removal spells in hand since they didn't do anything last turn. Five mana for Chandra Torch of Defiance, which can still crew Heart of Kiron. So that's gonna hurt. Gotta hope for a Binding the Old Gods or Maelstrom Pulse to destroy their Planeswalker. Mortify can deal with Heart of Kiron at least. Although Chandra is still an issue. So we'll Hydroid for two to try and find white mana. All right, Rampage can deal with Chandra too. Enough! And I'll happily Trump block here to save ourselves for damage. Yep. You're going down. Finds a Braid for Hydroid. We're at five. So we're dead to another Chandra here. I guess we'll gain two here too. So we're not quite dead to another Chandra. We would be at one. Could go for Niv. Or we can Rampage and still keep a Mortify in case they manage to crew the heart somehow. Seems better. And then next turn we can play Niv on a Hopefully more stable board. Alright, so at long last we found the planes. Well, their opponent's probably holding more removal in hand, so Niv is not necessarily going to stick around for long. They probably also have another Heart of Kiron in hand. So destroying this one might not necessarily accomplish a whole lot, but probably still better than going for Scrap Heap. So Heart down. Do they have another one? They do. And get rid of Chandra. And then could also Deafening Clarion for the Scrap Heap, but that's my only play for the turn, so Nif seems better even though it's probably not going to survive. And just a clarion to draw. Alright, so not the best niff there. It's going to be unlicensed disintegration, which Deals another three to our face, so if they can crew the hearts, we're dead. But it's just gonna be the scrap heap to crew it, put us to two. Uh, 
And then scavenger grounds, exiling all graveyards so we can't gain any life with Clothus. That's a smart move. Alright, so... Gotta go for another niv Mizzet here. And uh, won't be able to do anything else for the turn. And then once again we're dead if they can crew Heart of Kiron some other way. Could also go for Clarion kills Crap Heap and Thought Erasure. And then hope they don't top deck away to crew the hearts. Maybe that's better. So let's uh, Thought Erasure. Take a Braid. And then Harbor. I think I keep on top since that maybe lets me cast something after playing Niv. Alright, let's see if they can crew the heart. They cannot. We get to exile Scrap Heap. And then play Niv. Finding a bunch of goodies. And we'll Thought Erasure. Just a lance, and our opponent concedes. Alright, so very close game here against Black Red Midrange. Our opponent unable to find more ways to crew the heart in the final stretch. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand seems fine. Turn two, we can either Thought Erasure or Cold Steel Heart, which ramps us into Niv Mizzets. So I probably want a Thought Erasure to help me hit my land drop with the Surveil, and then Cold Steel turn 3. Still in time to maybe turn 4 Niv Mizzets, if all goes according to plan. Opponent with a Leafkin Druid. Let's have a look. Opponent on Elementals, take the Risen Reef. And Clarion can clean up all the small stuff, so that seems okay. Could have also bottomed it since we still need an extra land for Niv. But Clarion's gonna be pretty effective here. Strand the opponent on three mana. And Cold Steel needs to name green. So we can binding the Cavalier. Ooh, Genesis Ultimatum. So if we kill the Cavalier, they can put that on top. Although there's still one mana short of casting it, so I think we want to Clothus before we kill the Cavalier. Could also just go for Niv, but I kind of like the Clothus plan here. We're not dying right away, and if we can deal with the scariest threats out of the opponent's graveyard, we should be fine. Chandra also worth exiling. But we'll get rid of Ultimatum first. So I could Binding, but now I think we Niv. So next turn we can Exile Chandra and think about destroying Cavalier. Alright, Omnath. Also a good one. Ghost face. And Cavalier is 6-7. Gonna hit us. So we can get rid of Risen Reef or Chandra. I think Chandra's carrier. And then we can cut Omnath. Binding Cavalier. Or we can just uh, time wipe, although missing double white, so that doesn't work. Yeah, binding 
and cut seems fine. So, kill on math. And Cavalier. Maybe should have killed Cavalier and then Omnath so they can put Omnath on top. Although Omnath isn't the scariest play here. And we'll keep niv at back. So they get a 4-4 Omnath. Our opponent is at 12, so next turn we can kill them with ribbons and an attack from niv -Mizzet. Alright, so we should have it here. Get rid of any spell to deal two to them. Get a land, doesn't matter. Tank for six. And ribbons for lethal. Alright, so we had a great start against Teamer Elementals. They almost managed to get back into it. But luckily Niv Mizzet and then Ribbons to close out the game. So yeah, overall 5 color Niv, a pretty fun mid-rangey controlling deck in the format. It can struggle against some of the more linear decks that can very quickly kill you if you don't draw the right interaction, since it does take a while to get set up and find all the colors of mana to cast our powerful spells. But once you get to the mid to late game, the deck can do some very powerful things. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.